Hey everybody, it's Dinosaur George answering your questions from our website, dinosaurgeorge.com. If you have a question about anything to do with prehistoric life, it doesn't just have to be about dinosaurs, uh, go to my website and there's a page called Ask Dinosaur George. Fill out the form, send it to me. Remember, most of the questions I get, I respond by email. But I choose a few and, and put them on the video. So if you send them to me, uh, maybe yours will end up on the video. All right, here we go. Uh, this first question comes from Rowan, who lives in Alberta, Canada. Uh, he wants to know if I'm a real paleontologist. Rowan, the word paleontologist is kind of confusing. There are paleontologists, that is people who study prehistoric life, and then there are degreed paleontologists. I am not a degreed paleontologist. I did not go to college and get my degree in paleontology. Um, it's a little tough when people ask me if I'm a paleontologist because I've studied paleontology for 30 years. I probably own every book ever written on the subject. I've probably read every college textbook on it. But it's hard for me to say I'm a paleontologist because for those individuals out there that have dedicated their life to going to college and getting their, their degree, um, those in my opinion are the real paleontologists. I feel like I play a different role than most people in this industry. Paleontologists are the people teaching in the classroom and doing the real research and doing the study and, and going out in the field. Um, my role, I feel, is to kind of be a liaison between the paleontologist and the public. Um, I spend most of my time speaking publicly. I see over a million students. Uh, when I go speak, um, I've seen over a million students in the last couple years. Uh, I make hundreds of appearances every year. I speak at colleges and high schools and elementary schools and, and uh, public events, museums, libraries, that kind of thing. Um, my goal is to share with the public what I know about dinosaurs. The paleontologists, the people that are out there in the field doing the research, I basically study what they study and then I sort of convey it to the public. So when I say I'm a paleontologist, yeah, that's what I study, it's what I do, but I don't feel comfortable calling myself a prof or a, a I'm not a degreed paleontologist because I did not get my degree. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I don't want to take away from those individuals that are really doing the work on the front line. So, so there's your answer. Um, but I will tell you this, in my defense, I can hold my own against any degreed paleontologist. I know a lot about the subject. I don't want to brag, but I know a lot. And so um, what's really funny is I meet these paleontologists who at first are a little reluctant to, to, um, to consider me an equal because I don't have a degree. But within a few minutes, I can, I can talk the talk, I can speak the language, and uh, I think they, they learn pretty quickly that I do know a lot about it. Certainly not to the nth degree for those that study the real minutia of paleontology. I like to say that I know a little about a lot. And some paleontologists know a lot about a little, so, so uh, that's the answer. Okay, uh, Joanna uh, writes to me from Yorkshire, England. Uh, I have written four letters to a paleontologist here in England, and he has never written me back. Well, that kind of goes along with what I was just explaining to Rowan about paleontology. Uh, paleontologists, degree paleontologists, have a different role. A lot of them don't have the time to be able to communicate with the general public because they're so involved in research and study. Now there are a lot that will. Uh, somebody that I consider to be one of the world's greatest paleontologists, Dr. Robert Bacher. Th this guy is a perfect example of somebody that goes out of his way to communicate with the public. But it doesn't mean that they don't want to talk to you. It just means that their roles are different. They don't necessarily have the time. And in a lot of cases, they don't, they don't convey things well with the general public. It's, if some child comes up and asks a paleontologist if G.I. Joe can kill a Tyrannosaurus Rex, well, some of their reactions are, well, they don't live at the same time and G.I. Joe isn't real and that's not possible and they didn't have guns back then. Uh, that, that, that's not the way to communicate with the general public. 
So again, I feel my role is better suited for communicating to the general public. Don't be discouraged if you write a paleontologist and they don't respond. Um, sometimes they don't have the time. Sometimes because they work in museums or universities, they may never even get your letter. Somebody may be intercepting it in advance. So, uh, Joanna, don't be upset. Um, understand that everybody has different focuses in life and it could be that the paleontologist that you're writing there in England just may not have the time uh, to communicate back to you or even answer your question. So uh, send your question to me. I'll do my best to try to answer it. Okay, Mitchell, here in San Antonio, Texas, that's where I live, I saw in Jurassic Park that raptors tap their toes on the ground before they attack. Is that true? Mitchell, one thing to remember about any television show you ever see is that what you're seeing is not necessarily fact. And that goes for my show, Jurassic Fight Club, that airs on the History Channel. Um, not everything you see is absolute fact. We can't predict exactly the way animals behave. We can try our best to make it as realistic as we think, but we just don't know. But here's the thing about the movie Jurassic Park. I loved all the Jurassic Park movies. Anybody that likes dinosaurs loved the movies. Uh, but that's fiction. And when you see them tapping that claw on the ground, that's just done to add suspense. Check this out. This is a foot of a Utah raptor. This is a giant raptor. And listen, Utah raptors are big, big dudes. Um, when you look at the foot of a raptor, you see it's got four toes. But raptors only walk on two toes. This big, gigantic curved claw that you see here, this is what kept them alive. This is what makes them living. This is the killing claw. It was used for one thing, and that is to slash open its prey. Well, think of this claw the way a chef uses a knife. A chef is not going to take his or her knife and tap it on the counter or crack, crunch it on the ground because if they do, they're going to possibly chip it or more importantly, they're going to make it dull. You can't cut without, uh, without a sharp edge. So they're not going to do that. A raptor would never, in my opinion, tap this claw on the ground. Its foot is designed to keep it up off the ground. When it walks, it walks with this toe pointing up in the air. It does not want this claw to touch the ground. So I don't believe that a raptor would ever, in his right mind, tap that foot on the ground because it just doesn't make any sense. It's just, it's just not something he's going to do. Um, okay, so again, go to the website. Um, uh, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page if you have a question, if you'd like to ask me something, send me an email. Uh, also, remember, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Facebook, and more importantly, when you go to the website, sign up for the, uh, for the newsletter. If you'd like to see what the newsletters are, click on the page that says Free Newsletter, and you'll see the archive of all of our previous uh, newsletters. You can go online and look at those. You can always go to the website and look at them if you don't want to receive an email with your copy. You can go to the website. But whatever the case, visit the website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Send me your questions. I love answering them. Um, I hope you all uh, have a great week. Have a good month. And um, I look forward to hearing from you soon. Take care. We'll see you.